Interviewing Broadway stars of all kind Asking the questions that you have pined Grab a slice and you can unwind Cause now it's time for a pizza yawn Hi there, and welcome to the next episode of A Pizza Your Mind. I am Jonathan Timpanelli, and today I am with a uh, a very cool uh, a very cool person. Uh, I just <laughs> met. Yeah, I, that's that's how I'm gonna I'm gonna All describe right, you. Uh, from Broadway's "Ain't Too Proud," Ooh. the life and times of the Temptations, playing Paul Williams. Give it up for James Harkness. Yes. Howdy, howdy. Yeah, there's I'm gonna am I, pretend am I looking like here. Am I looking here? Where uh, am I looking? Does it matter? Split the difference. Look right over there. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's where you're gonna So I'm here on a pizza in your mind. Um also first, this is a thing real quick. We're gonna open up the pizza All before right. any words are spoken. Grab your slice. Ready? Cheers, my man. Cheers. Yum. Pizza for breakfast. Um so you grew up in Texas, yes? Yes. Born in Texas. I'm from El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas. And uh, as a kid, did you did you want to be a performer? Well, what was the you know like when you're a kid, like what was the first thing you wanted to be when you? I don't know. No, you don't know. I don't have that those kinds of memories. I think I really was just a happy kid. Love that. And uh, so I didn't have these fantasies of being a doctor or a lawyer or a fireman or a police officer or even a dancer or a singer. So when did you, how old were you when you, when you decided to get into, because um, it was dance first, correct? Dance was first. Um, what did it for you? What was the thing that you were like, I want to do that? Uh, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Chambers. She actually was the first person who really introduced dance to me because I was crazy flexible as a kid. I'm still flexible now, but I was like crazy flexible. Like I could sit in a, in a right split and flip all the way over to a left split without getting off the ground. Same, like, before you came here, actually, I was doing the same thing. You were doing thing. that. Yeah, mm, I, just, can, I was well, eating the first pizza. Right, you know, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's the first person who introduced actual dance terminology into my world. Uh, there was me and a girl named Patsy Garcia, and we had musical timing and stuff, and she saw that we liked to dance and to run around because we just used to kind of do that all the time. So she, that's how I learned what first position was, what second position was, what a plie was because she taught us that. But uh, dance firmly came into my life in high school. That's so I went home and I asked my mom if I could audition for the dance team and she was like, no, you cannot. Really? And uh, I was like, but please, no. So I finally wore her out over like weeks of going, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I? Good. And she just finally said, fine, go ahead. And I got in and that, that started my fascination, real true fascination with dance, even though I was already fascinated with it because it was anything that came on television that had singing and dancing in it, I was glued to the television. Absolutely. So other than dancing, choreographing, performing, singing. Is there any other passions that you have? Um, everything artistic. Everything artistic. Pretty much everything artistic. You have nothing outside of art, art, or like any other passions, anything that you like? Not really. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's totally cool. Yeah, I don't do every, artistic is what my, my thing is. Cool. Yeah. Um, so your journey, I want to talk about your journey a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so after El, El Paso, Mm -hmm. Where'd you go out that next? Military. Military? Yeah, I was in the Navy. Really? For how long? Four years. Four years? Mm -hmm. No way. Yep. I didn't apply for colleges, which I re sometimes I regret because I'm like, I could have probably applied for Juilliard and gotten in. My dance teacher in my sophomore year had uh, someone come down and see our end of the year recital and they offered me a scholarship to finish out my remaining years of high school at a performing arts high school. Oh, wow. So once I stopped, I graduated, I had to figure out what I was going to do because there were no prospects for me since I hadn't really set myself on any real particular path. 
So my father was in the army. My older brother was in the army. My second older brother was in the Navy. Logical thing to do was military. join the military because there was nothing else for me. And I ended up choosing San Diego as my base. One, once I got stationed there, walking around downtown San Diego, one night, probably around 10 p.m. or something like that, and I was going down 7th Avenue, and I looked up and I saw a sign that said Stage 7. And that was all the sign said. Came back after I got off the ship the next day, walked up the stairs, two classes, two windows of classes going on, and I had found the dance studio. And I literally had that ah! <laughs> moment because I could have walked down any street. Mm -hmm. You know, I could not have even looked up. That brought dance back into my life in a major way, and I didn't realize how much I missed it. Mm -hmm. And there was a part of me that was depressed, and I didn't understand that until that moment, really. Because you were like, oh, I can do, like, there's a lot of people that do this, so it's like, cool that I can do it too, like it's a real thing. It was exciting because it was a room full of dancers. Yeah. Through dance classes, I met a girl who was going to LA to audition for an agency. We auditioned, audition was over. I don't remember anything about it other than that it was hard, but it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. At the end of the audition, the uh, agent was like, thank you guys very much. We really appreciate you guys coming. So if we like you, we're gonna you'll hear from us in about a week's time. I got a phone call the next day, which I was not remotely expecting. And uh, they wanted to sign me because they had an audition that they wanted to send me out on. Right away. Right away. And I was like, I'm in the Navy. I can't. And there was like that little bit of a silence that kind of like, well, why the hell were you at the audition? <laughs> yeah, why'd you go there? You know, why, you know. Yes, dig into another. <laughs> um, so, when did you get to Vegas? Um, so... Was that the next, is that the next step? Am I, am I basically rushing? Basically, it's yeah. the next step. LA happened. Another audition comes up. I go in and I ask for a day off. And they were like... Okay, sure. So I go audition for Michael Jackson. I went in and auditioned and I made it through the first day. Made it to the callbacks. Ended up making it down to the last group of men that Michael was to choose from for his next concert tour. So Kenny Ortega we get to put ourselves on film. So they, they had the group of us do the combination as a group one more time together, and then they separated us, and individually you do the combination in the room one by, by yourself. One? one by one? in by yourself. Oh, that's good. With the, with the creative team, but on camera by yourself. Uh, so, and then I danced, and that was it. Um, and I waited. Like all of us, we all waited to, like, find out what Michael was going to do. So I did not get the job. But what happened is Kenny Ortega really liked me. So agent calls me up saying, Kenny Ortega really liked you. There's an, he is another artist that he works with and he wants you to come to that audition. So I went and I did the best thing that I did, the best work that I could do. And many of the dancers that were at the Michael audition we go to this audition for this amazing uh, Latin artist, Puerto Rican artist named Cheyenne. And I get my first job. Thank you, Kenny Ortega. And uh, that's how I started. And I never looked back. Um, but a period happened where I really did need to figure out what I was going to do. And uh, I was doing an industrial uh, for Nike. And uh, we stopped in Vegas. And I had friends that used to live in San Diego that had moved to Vegas. And for the longest time, they kept going, oh, James, you got to come out to Vegas. It's like, you'll love it here and you'll get a job in a minute. So I'm in Vegas. I wanted to see them. And I had some time between the next leg of the industrial. So I stayed with them for a little bit. 
and they immediately started setting me up on auditions because they were like, well, you, just, you should just go, just go to auditions, just go to the auditions. And I was like, fine, fine, fine. So I get off the airplane and there's a sign that says, enter the night, the one show you must see. Show doesn't exist anymore. It was at the Stardust Hotel and Casino, which okay. also doesn't exist yeah. anymore. So I remember seeing that sign and I was like, okay. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I gotta see, all see the it, it says it. <laughs> Siegfried and Roy, and blah, 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 blah. Like all the things were up. And, and then I, but then of course, you know, you see the sign because everyone's advertising, get to, get to my luggage and I look up, enter the night, the one show you must see. It's like, mm -hmm. and so then I'm like hanging out with my friends and I decided to do a walk of the strip. And I ended up underneath the Stardust Hotel and Casino sign, which was a, just such a beautiful, iconic sign with, of the Stardust. And it was like, enter the night, the one show. I was like, fine. And I auditioned. So they offered me the job right there. Love it. And, uh, and I took the job. Absolutely. And I moved to Vegas. And it, that was a life, a huge life shift for me. Talk about a sign, you know? Talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That was... It's for you. <laughs> All right, we're at my favorite part of the show. It is called Speed Slice. How this works, it, don't worry. It's not for you. It's more for me, but it's also for you. Okay. So I have a, a, a paper here with 10 questions. Okay. You have to answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And because of the low budget this is, we don't have a timer. So the amount of time you have to answer it is the amount of time it takes me to eat a slice of pizza. <laughs> so okay. you're gonna, so you don't so have to I read have these to... questions out loud. I'm gonna put them on the thing. So all you have to do is answer them. Okay. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Uh, invisibility. Ooh. Jesus. No, that's not it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what next? Mm. Ooh, um, the uh, succotash. Mm. None. Ice cream at two o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. None. Flowers. Mm -mm -mm. None. Mm -mm. <sighs> Jesus. That <Yeah, again? laughs> <laughs> It's none. You have the big one. Ah! Crying out loud. No, I don't. Because you, shit, you haven't finished your pizza yet. Yeah, no, hurry. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, wait, that, is, that a, is that a body part? A mole. Thank okay. you. Flowers. Okay, I got seven. I got a full Oh, uh, uh, uh. Except me. <laughs> um, uh, uh, eggs, milk, orange juice. Uh, a pizza, you're mine. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> I, I failed, but thank you for, well, I mean, you are still chewing. I didn't fail. He won. I succeeded. James, Har James Harkness won. Even because I called on the name of Jesus twice. Twice. Hey, Jesus is always the answer. <laughs> From Vegas, after you do that show, next step is Bridway? More Vegas. More Vegas. Nope. Um, so after that show happened, I got offered a job to choreograph for a recording artist who had a show in at the Las Vegas Hilton. Then when that was over, I did a couple of more things around Vegas and then I did Reno, I did Lake Tahoe, and then I did a show in Reno, which moved me to Reno where I was the choreographer, the co-choreographer of, of the show, of two shows as well as an assistant to the director of the show, and I was one of the featured performers in the show. It was one of the coolest things I've done until now.
of being able to have this moment that I have in, in uh, Ain't Too Proud and of course being fully within the body of Ain't Too Proud. So Reno was an amazing, amazing time of my life. That got me to New York. Which, the first show is Aida, My correct? first show was Aida. Yeah, um, my journey to Broadway is also not linear, really. A friend of mine, when Rent came to Las Vegas, got me tickets to see Rent because he was like, you should be on Broadway. And so I'm, I want you to go see this show. So he bought me tickets to go see Rent. And then he was like, they're having auditions. You should audition. So I saw Rent, which was really awesome. And I went and audition. I don't read sheet music. All the singing that I have done in my career has always been with a band or with a, with a track. Yeah. And they give you, they gave you a track. So I omitted the sheet music, sat in my truck. I had a truck and I listened to the song, went into the room and they were like, okay, so go ahead. And I was like, okay, waiting for them to press play. And the piano player was like, bloom. And I was like, wait, no, wait, what? Couldn't find the key? Because oh. I'd never sung with the piano before. I had never, ever sung with the piano before. It was not good. Not, not good at all. Um, it happens. So <laughs> casting looks at my resume. And they were like, there's a lot of dance stuff on it. And they were like, oh, so, so you, you're a dancer? And I was like, yes. And they were like, hmm. Well, you should think about Saturday Night Fever. It was like, it was a rent's not your thing because rent is all about singers. And, uh, but Saturday Night Fever, they had a lot of great dancing in Saturday Night Fever. And so maybe for something that I needed a vocal wasn't gonna be as necessary. So I go into the room, same casting people. And it was just like, ah, oh, well by that time, I made sure I knew how to sing with the piano. <laughs> Good. Learn from that Lesson mistake. Learned. Yes. So I went in and I danced the choreography and I sang my song and they offered me the position in Saturday Night Fever. In the meantime, casting called me back and they said, we also have another audition that we'd like you to audition for and it's Aida. One of my favorite auditions of my entire career still thus far. I've never experienced anything like it prior. What made it so special? Wayne Salento. He knows how to run an audition room. He had live drummers in the room. Like we didn't, we didn't dance to a recording or we didn't dance to a piano. We danced to drums. Wow. People were barefoot and we were like, he was teaching the choreography and everything was in the earth and it was rooted in the drums and rooted in the floor. And he talked about the quality of movement and what it was for, what it was and why we were so pleading because we are prisoners in this camp that that we've been taken from our homeland. And I had never been in a room with a choreographer who took time to explain why the movement. So I was floored. I oh man, I got my entire life in that audition. So I went in and I sang and I danced. I, the whole experience of that day sat on me. A couple of days later, uh, not a couple of days later, about a week later, I get the phone call saying that they wanted to offer me Aida. While I was still trying to figure out Saturday Night Fever, so I had just booked two Broadway shows in the span of maybe a month. Um, <laughs> that's nuts, man. My agent, so I didn't have an agent, but I got an agent because I needed someone at the time. And I was like, I just booked two Broadway shows and someone gave me a number for an agent. So this agent calls me and they're like, um, so you booked Broadway, Aida. And I was like, okay, is that a good thing? <laughs> And there was this moment of silence, <laughs> like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> yes, it's Broadway. And I was like, okay, okay. I never saw myself moving to New York. When I finally understood what Broadway was, I couldn't be more thrilled. 
I didn't realize that my support system was as vast as it was until Ain't Too Proud. Ain't Too Proud, my community showed up. And I'm talking beyond the people that are closest to me, which is a very, very, very small community. Um, getting my first principal role in a Broadway show after I have been performing on Broadway since 2000. I mean, everybody has you their know, journey. Everyone has their That's journey. Your, your journey happened the way it was, and it happened the way it was supposed to happen. Absolutely. And because and now you're here on a piece of your mind. You've made it. I have made <laughs> it. So, God, I've made it. <laughs> you're eating pizza in a studio apartment. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> um, this, um, you got anything? <laughs> a little hard, <laughs> real? <laughs> You play Paul Williams. Now, do you think, separate yourself from the show, mm -hmm. do you think you identify mostly as Paul Williams in the show? This is the beautiful thing about this show and how they cast it. They knew what they were doing. And I think these roles also called to the five of us. Each of us, there are things about us that are so akin to these characters that we play that they are kind of intrinsically a part of us. Before a show, take me through like a, a, a like a like a, a quick synopsis of like how you prepare for e each show now, like the the shows. It's different every day. Oh really? This because you don't have not, like a mm -mm. a regimen. Mm -mm. Interesting. Um, aside from warming my voice up, and then the five of us, we do a smaller circle every day right before we go on and to check in you all right how you feeling everybody good cool or someone will come into the circle and it's just like i don't got it today i ain't guys like okay then we got you oh that's so beautiful every day without fail as the curtain is opening we're laughing about something hilariously laughing that carries right into us going on stage because some stupid shit always happens so you just hear, <laughs> you gotta smile. So that's so great, though. And that is without fail every show. So after this, do you, like well not after this, but like do. You, I want what, to go next that way. Okay, but what is that to you? Because right, you're you're starring in a Broadway <laughs> show, originating a role. What, like, what, what is that to me? Yeah. There are a lot of things that I want to do. Um, I have music that I've been working on for a long time that I finally need to get out. That's scary as hell. I want to do everything that I can do at the best level, at the highest level that I can do it at. Everyone, uh, please go see Ain't Too Proud, The Life and Times of the Temptations. This has been a pizza of your mind. Thank you again. James? Thank you. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I had a ball. Good. I really did. We had a pizza. I don't want to end it there. I'm sorry. <laughs> no! <laughs> Interviewing Broadway stars of all kind Asking the questions Unwind, cause now it's time for a pizza yum.